Okay. All right, I think we're live. I always keep this up at the beginning because sometimes the lives don't work. Anyway, I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. And today we are going to talk about 10 quick fixes for common English grammar mistakes. Now this should be entertaining, uh, maybe even for native speakers as well, but hopefully you will enjoy this video. All right, so some interesting things that I notice uh, about this, uh, about like these kinds of things. Number one is that we will be covering mostly uh, basic errors because this is mostly what I see. <laughs> so I get, you know, thousands of emails and comments, uh, especially having been taught, uh, having uh, been a teacher uh, for many years, I'm trying a new marker today too. Wow, this stuff is pretty strong. But let me know where you're uh, coming from, uh, post in the chat, uh, and if you know anyone else who struggles with English and they'd like to improve, let them know this is going on. Wow, now that marker, that marker takes too long, oh my goodness. All right, so I'm going to try, so I got some some new markers over here. I thought I would give these a try. What oh, nice to see people. France at three in the morning. Oh my goodness. Yes, I think I will try. Maybe uh, next week I will have a, like a later time. I'm going to give that a try. I feel bad for people because I'm always doing this at the same time. <laughs> oh, a lot of people can't join me live. Uh, but hopefully, uh, even if you're not joining me live, you can still enjoy this video. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. I will keep my eye on the chat, but hopefully uh, I can get through these because I want to cover 10 of these different things. Uh, Roderico, nice to see you there. But hopefully everybody is enjoying their day. Please like the video and do share it with anybody else uh, just so YouTube knows, hey, we should tell more people about this video. All right, so let's get into this. We're going to cover, again, mostly basic things that I see people making mistakes with because uh, grammar is really the most important part of the language, especially for professional communication. I will often get emails from people uh, who are sending, you know, they're like requesting help or like could be like sales information or something like that, trying to get us to do something or buy something or whatever. And anytime I see basic errors in this, uh, and this is even from native English speakers, uh, I'm just automatically like, all right, this person is not serious. They're probably not going to be paying attention to detail. Uh, and I know a lot of English learners, they understand, like they can understand basic English, but often they will be making basic mistakes. So we're going to cover a lot of these and I'll, I'll help you try to think about things the same way natives do. Because again, when parents are teaching their native kids, they still have to think about how do I correct basic mistakes and how do I get my kids thinking about these. So hopefully uh, with this video, we'll get you thinking about some of these basic mistakes the same way parents do when they're teaching their own kids. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is A versus an. Uh, and I will see this a lot, like people will make mistakes uh, if they're just using A or an, they don't know, like I had like an, like an pencil or something. Now, th this is the kind of thing that you should be reviewing again and again, seeing lots of different examples so you understand it, you recognize it, and that, that should feel like bad to you. <laughs> so you look at it like, and pencil, oh no, well, you wouldn't say that, it would be a pencil. But usually what, what learners are trying to do is they're trying to memorize a rule when they really should be thinking about the sound of the word. Remember that native English speakers, when these are little kids trying to learn the language, they're thinking about the language from the sound, not from the word, because little kids can't read. So they're listening and they're trying to understand what the rule is for this, and the rule is from the sound, all right? So if we say an pencil, an pencil, it's kind of hard to say this, but a pencil is much easier, much more smooth, and it just, it just rolls off your tongue very easily, a pencil a pencil, a pencil. So rather than thinking about like what the first letter is, it's more about listening to the sound of it, all right? Like uh, as an example, people might think, well, maybe we should write an history. 
an history uh, or a history or an umbrella. You can listen to the word and think what would be the natural thing, what would be the easiest thing to say, all right? Or, so if we have an umbrella, then people think, well, like any time we have uh, a U here, then we should be using an. But if we have a word like unicorn, we say a unicorn. But why? Because the sound here is like y. So a unicorn sounds a lot easier to say, it's a lot smoother and faster than to say an unicorn. An unicorn. All right. So rather than trying to think about a rule, just listen to the sound. All right. Think about what would be easier to say. And as you get more examples, and typically when when you're learning something like this, if you're if you're learning a new rule or you're trying to understand something, if it's a if it's a mistake that you might make, then this is something that you should be listening for. So when you're listening to maybe watching YouTube videos or something, pay attention to that. And even if it's just focusing on one thing, like do we use a or an, that's the kind of thing you should be listening for. So don't worry about other mistakes or other errors. Just focus on this one thing until you get it right. All right, hopefully that makes sense. But again, we want to focus on individual things and really understand them like a native and that's how we can use them fluently. Hopefully there are no questions about that, but if there are, let me know. But remember, uh, the goal here is not to try to remember a word or uh, a particular rule, it's just listening to the sound of the word. All right, so a unicorn and an umbrella. They both begin with the letter U, but we have A and N here because of the sound difference. Okay, all right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, we're going to keep moving along here because we've got 10 of these to go through and then I will answer questions after that. But if you do have questions, if anything is not clear, let me know. All right, what are we doing for number two? Now, this is another common error I will see uh, a lot. And this is when we're talking about, let's say, four, uh, let's see, four years old. So my younger daughter, Noel, is four years old right now, but I can also say I have a four-year-old daughter. So four-year-old, and I'm going to put some dashes in here. I want to connect these things with four-year-old daughter. Now often, I will see people making the mistake of keeping the S here four years old daughter, four years old daughter, all right? Now again, I want you to think about this like a native. What people are thinking, like natives, they're not really consciously thinking about this, but as they learn these, they're understanding the rules like this. So a four year, so four years old, we're kind of thinking about like, imagine like a time, one year, two, three, four. So it's, it's kind of talking about four individual years. So four years old. I'm talking about how many years my daughter is. But in this one, if we're talking about a four-year-old daughter, we're really talking about one thing. It's like one duration of time. So it might be four years, but we're actually talking about the whole thing as one idea, okay? So when natives are like, okay, yeah, it's like, uh, it's a, the trip is like three days long, three days long. So we might have three days or four days or five days because we're counting the individual days. That's how we're thinking about it. Even if we don't, we don't consciously think about it, that's what we're thinking. But if we're talking about the trip, like it's like one thing, okay? So if I have a, a five, like a five day trip, so this is like five day, five day trip or something like that, five day, five day trip. So in this, in this same example, I'm talking about one, two, three, four, five days as one thing, okay? So rather than just talking about uh, like the days individually, we're thinking about it as one idea. Any questions about that? I know this might be a new way of thinking about this, but it's, this is a, a common mistake I will see, uh, especially more kind of difficult examples of people are talking about like how many years something is, uh, or how many people, or how many inches, or something. So if I'm talking about like how many inches this is, 
this, I could say this marker is one, two, three, four inches long because I'm talking about the inch. I'm talking about each one of these individually. But if I'm talking about like the marker as one thing, it's a four inch marker. All right, so the same thing down here, I would say like four inch marker. Or I would say this is, the, the marker is like four, four inches, okay? So anytime we're talking about like the, the whole thing as one unit, a four inch marker, then we've got one thing, okay? But if we want to talk about the inches, then we're talking about like the marker is being four inches long, all right? Any questions about that? Chat is a little bit quiet. Does that mean you're listening and you're understanding or you're not understanding, all right? Now again, I, these are uh, the kinds of things that I will see very frequently. Uh, so pay attention for this. Both of these are correct. It just depends on what you're talking about, all right? But hopefully you can think about this a bit more like a native speaker by thinking about the individual units, whatever those, whatever those are, uh, versus the whole unit as one thing. All right. Looks like there are no questions, so we will move on. All right. Next, we're going to talk about uncountable versus countable things. All right. Doing very well. All right, so talking about, uh, this is another very common thing I see where people will say, uh, like, I need more I need more informations. I need more informations. I need more information. Or, uh, like, they will say, like, please give me Some, please give me some advices. Please give me some advices. So I need more information. Please give me some advices. All right. Now, these are things that, again, I want you to think about it like a native speaker. And anything, if you're, you're trying to guess if it's like a countable noun or an uncountable noun, rather than think about it like that, like, just imagine holding something in your hand, all right? So if I take something like these markers, so I have these markers in my hand. These are things I can physically count. I can pick them up individually. Like this is a whole marker. If I pick it up, that's, it's like one specific thing. A marker, a marker, a marker, all right? But if I have a, a bunch of sand in my hand, like a pile of sand, I can't really pick up one like one sand, I can pick up one grain of sand. So like one tiny little little piece of sand, like a grain of sand. But I can't, I can't really pick up like sands. I wouldn't say that. All right. So hopefully as you hear these, and many of these are used very commonly like information or advice, we can't count information. Okay. I can't pick out like one information or two informations. It's, it's just a mass of thing like water or orange juice or milk. So I have information in my hand. Now, if I want to talk about individual things, I might see like a piece of information or a bit of information, but I can't really count like how many informations are in this pile of information, all right? So if you have a pile of something, you know, like it could be pasta, or it could be even like some jello or milk. And you can't really have a pile of milk, but you know, something like that where you have like a cup of something. Let's say that. So if I have a cup of markers, so I've, uh, if I put some individual markers in here, we put some markers inside a cup, there's still a cup of markers, but I can pull out the individual markers. All right, so there are three markers in this cup. There are three markers in my hand. So I can pull one out and it's still, it's a marker, all right? But you can't do that with advice or information. So anytime you have something where you can't, you can't like put it in your hand and hold it and, and, and easily like pull out one thing, then it's uncountable, all right? 
And you will, again, hear things like this information, advice, these are very commonly used, uh, but anything else where you're wondering like, well, could I, could I like pull out like one milk? You can't pull out one milk. You could pull out a drop of milk or a bottle of milk. So anything where like you could put something in a different container. So maybe we have like a, I don't know, like a bottle. This is my bottle right here. This is a bottle of milk. So a bottle or a jar or a glass or even a tiny a drop drop of milk or a gallon of milk or a, a tub of milk all right and in the same way i could have a jar of information i could have a jar of advice all right we, we might not like logically think about it like that but it's the same thing you just put advice in the jar and that's just how it learns okay so please give me some advice now if you're looking for like one piece of advice you can certainly say that Okay, so please give me one piece of advice or give me a piece of advice. All right, so remember anytime you can't, if, if you're holding something in your hand or you put it in a container of some kind and you can't pull out like one and, and say what that thing is, then it's uncountable, all right? But try to think about this uh, like a native. That's why I'm giving you, this is the same thing I would teach my kids because I'm, I'm, again, they have to learn these same rules. So they don't know if information is like countable or not. They don't really understand what information is. But over time, they're thinking like, oh, okay, like information, like you're, you're giving me, you know, words or, or news or other things like that. But it's still, it's just like a mass of stuff like pasta or, uh, or a liquid like milk or glue or juice. So the same thing. So then that's why we practice like a glass of milk, a jar of this. All right. But I could still have a bottle or a jar of cookies. So if we put my cookies in this same jar, I can still take out one cookie, but I can't take out one milk. Okay. It's just, it's always just milk. All right, so it's only in that different shape. So remember this, especially these words, I need more information, I need some advice. So if you want to thank somebody, oh, thank you for the information or thank you for the advice. I'll go back and check chat very quickly, uh, but let me know if you have any questions about that. It should be pretty easy to understand, all right? All right, let's see, greetings from Turkey. You are so cool, teacher. All right, so that's another example we won't be covering in this video. Thank you very much, though. Uh, but you would say, you are such a cool teacher. Or you could say, you are so cool. And as you get more examples of these and you hear people using these again and again, you will get used to using these. Remember that the goal is not to try to remember rules about the language. It's actually to subconsciously understand the rules so you use them automatically. If you're thinking about rules when you speak, you will probably not use them correctly. And this is usually because you learn something very quickly, like one page in a textbook, and then you didn't review it ever. Okay, so this is why I'm just covering some very basic things here, but when you're actually learning things, you should really take time and focus on something until you get it, until you really understand, like, ah, okay, now I get it, like, advice, you can't, you can't, like, hold an advice in your hand, you have just a, like, just a lot of, you know, a pile of advice or something like that, okay, so the same idea, all right, uh, let's see if we have any more, but thank you very much. Love your lessons. Uh, let's see, I'm Russian and I love your lessons very much. Thank you very much. Dan G says, hello, Drew, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Hi, from Thailand says, Cam, nice to see you there. Hi, Andrew, 8 p.m. I'm glad to see you. I'm under my blankets. <laughs> Enjoy, all right. So people watching from, from bed, I guess, or maybe just on the couch or something. Let's see, Miss from uh, Indonesia, Nay, from, uh, oh, it doesn't say. So San, Sanam, understanding. Hello, nice sir, nice to see you again. I'm late. But Nils is back. Nils is back. Nice to see you there, Nils. Victor, uh, I am talking about more than one marker. It would be the same four-inch markers. Is that correct? Yes, that's fine. So if these are all the same length, like if I, I go to the store and I, I say, like, I would like to buy four uh, three-inch markers. So I'm counting the number of them. I would like four of these markers. All right. I would like four three-inch markers. Good question. And that's another example of 
naturally varied review. So what your brain is doing is like, okay, I understand this example, what about this example? And the more examples you get, and you can find these like you know, just online or whatever, but if you're looking for something like a uh, three inch marker or four inch marker or something, if you put those examples into Google, it will just give you that. Uh, Chat GPT will do the same thing. Uh, Julian, nice to see you there. People, uh, hi teacher and people here, greetings from Colombia. I need teacher, I need to know what days are class, please. Uh, well, these classes are unscheduled. I usually just do them. I was, I, I had thought I was going to do one yesterday, but I did not. Uh, but yes, so I didn't know it would be today either. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, a nice way uh, to explain instead of drilling the rules. Yes. So as a teacher, you should be thinking like, how would I explain this to native kids? And if native kids don't understand what I'm saying, then I'm probably not going to like explain it well to adults either. All right. So now I have two daughters. So I have a two-year-old daughter, or I have a four-year-old daughter and a seven-year-old daughter. All right. But they're not. Uh, it's not a seven years old daughter. It's a seven-year-old daughter. We're talking about that. That whole thing. A seven-year-old daughter. So the daughter is like the key here. All right. We're talking about the daughter. We're not talking about like the years. All right. So if you, if, you can, if you can get that. And I, I'll try to review these as many times as I need to if you still don't understand. Uh, Rodrigo says, in Portuguese, the words for information and advice have plural forms. I assume that's the case in many other languages since it's a common mistake and people usually learn. Yeah, so if they're learning ESL, uh, and again, yes. So the point is, like, if you're, if you're learning it through your native language or you're just used to it, uh, like that kind of construction in your in your native language, then yes, it will be a little bit trickier. But this is again another reason why it's important to learn things the same way natives do. All right, you basically have to train yourself. Like ah, okay, like information uh, is not a countable thing, but we we don't think about the rule. Like if I ask people, uh, like if I ask native speakers just on the street, I say, hey, is uh, is information countable or uncountable? That's going to maybe scramble their brain a little bit. They will think like, what? Like, and they will have to stop and think about that. Now, a teacher would answer me very quickly, but most people would take a minute to think about that because they're not thinking about the rule. They're thinking about kind of understanding it uh, automatically and naturally because they've reviewed it so many times. All right, so that's the goal here. Now, a lot of people, again, they just won't, they won't like review many of the basic things, even though that's the most important thing they should be doing. So it's not learning new vocabulary, it's actually reviewing the vocabulary you already know. I know that sounds silly, but this is, when I explain to people that they can become more fluent speakers, even without learning any new words and grammar, that's what I mean. So if you take the vocabulary you already know and just learn it better and review it more, you will become a more fluent, more confident speaker. All right, uh, Ferdy says, can we say, do you have any information or advice for me? Yes, you can, because in that way, like, it's the same thing, like, do you have any pasta? Do you have any milk? All right. Or do you have some? So words where we can use them for uncountable things, but we wouldn't use a specific number like, do you have one information? Because we don't say, you, do you have one milk? Like, what do you mean one milk? Like, you mean like a bottle of milk or a glass of milk or a cup of milk? What are you asking for? Uh, but you could say yes. So anything that's like a general, uh, I don't have any information. I have some information. I would like more information. Okay, so we're not we're not talking about like three informations or something like that. Uh, and triple seven says, "Where are you from?" I am from Chicago in the United States. Fabio uh, Denise says, "Hi, AJ. You are an awesome teacher. Yes, you use that correctly. Very good. Thank you very much." Uh, is this how much and how many? Well, yes. So that's part of it as well. I try not to confuse people with too many examples of this at the same time, but you could ask in this same way. And even native speakers will make some mistakes with this. And like you will see it written down. If you go to a grocery store, you will see, like maybe you have seen this sign. Uh, there's like a sign for the, for the grocery store. You go through the aisle, you pick up your groceries, you put them in your cart, and then you go to the checkout. And there will be different aisles uh, for checking out. And some, some aisles are for uh, if you have like, I don't know, under 10 items or something like that. And the sign will say like 10 items. And this is so people can check out faster. We get more people going through if they don't have a lot of things. So 10 items 
or less. 10 items or less, all right? This is incorrect English, <laughs> but you will see it up like in actual like large grocery stores. They will have this sign. The correct answer is fewer, all right? Because we're counting the items. How many items do you have? I have one, two, three, four. So I have like, I have few items or I have fewer, but less is where we're talking about an amount of something. So you asked about how much and how many. That's the same kind of thing here. But I don't want to confuse people with a lot of different examples. The point is, is really to, to focus on one thing, really understand that, and then add to that. So now we can say like, how much information do you need? All right, or how much information do you have? How much space is available on your computer? How much space, all right? But if we're counting something like how many rooms do you have in your house? So in that way, we're talking about how many rather than the space or like the amount of something that we can't count, that'd be how much, okay? So how much ink, how much ink is in this marker? So it's one marker, I'm counting this, one marker, two markers, three markers, but how much ink is inside that? So I can't take out, I can't take out one ink, I can take out one drop of ink or one little cup of ink or something, but I can't count the inks. There are, there, it's not like 2,000 inks in, the, in here. <laughs> we couldn't count that, all right? So I'm giving you all these examples to, to help you think about this like a native because I want you to look at that grammar and laugh at it and say like, ah, like, now I get it, okay? All right, answer a couple more of this. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, which is the book? Switch about. Which is the book? I don't know what that means. Which, which is the book? Switch. I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see. Roland Ob says, saludos desde Peru de Peru. Pe. So coming from per, uh, Peru. Peru. Uh, Marcelo here from Dominican Republic, watching from Haiti. Thanks for your lessons. I love it, says Marcelo. Uh, John Albert says, good morning from the Philippines. Thank you for teaching. I learned a lot from you. Glad to hear it. All right. Hi, teacher. Nice to see you as always. Antonio, hi. This is Tony from Mexico. Would you please be so kind? I guess you mean so kind of sharing a few tongue twisters in order to practice and improve my pronunciation. <laughs> Do not, I, I know people are interested, they want to get something really complicated to try to improve their pronunciation, but you don't need tongue twisters to do that. Tongue twisters are, are if you already have like perfect pronunciation, <laughs> but you, they're not going to help you. Again, people, are, people want like something more advanced when it's much easier just to get the basic thing. All right, this is why like Frederick, which you can click on the link in the description below this video for, uh, that will go through all the pronunciation and listening that you need to sound more like a native English speaker uh, from the United States. Uh, so, so, I mean, you can find, uh, I'm sure there are on YouTube already videos of tongue twisters, but these are not necessary in order to improve, their pronu uh, pr improve your pronunciation. All right, Sita says, hi, Drill, uh, uh, Drew. Uh, Semitai from Kyrgyzstan, nice to see you there. Uh, let's see. All right, and then Slee says, that's so true, Drew. Recently I taught a lesson on travel vocabulary and the student was surprised at the fact that we spent 30 minutes discussing a suitcase and it's uh, network vocabulary such as carry, carry on. Yeah, but that's very, and so students will be, they will be surprised about that, yes. And so people say, okay, travel vocabulary, five minutes, but you can go deeper and deeper into the vocabulary to really understand uh, what people are talking about. Uh, let's see, all right, and Yes, Fabio says, sometimes Agora, I saw you talking about this book switch. I don't know what that means. Uh, yes, you're doing, uh, doing so much, doing well. I'm getting some giggle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, am I correct if I say the network vocabulary? Yeah, I mean, you could talk like if you say the network vocabulary, uh, it probably means you're talking about like phrases related to, uh, related to a network like a computer network, but when I'm talking about like a, a vocabulary network, so the order of those is reversed, a vocabulary network. So if, if you mean like, so here are phrases for travel and we're going to build a network like this. So this would be a vocabulary network, just like a train network or a computer network. 
So the, the key here is the vocabulary, and so we have a network for that. Yes, and so when you're when you're reviewing those things, you can be careful about which way. Duran says, "I just availed the vault." Uh, and again, you like a, a people often use like avail in this way. You should be just saying like purchase. All right, it, it would be a very rare thing for uh, for natives to say like to avail of something. But I hear natives or non-natives use that word a lot. Uh, I don't know how to start. Uh, send us an email, but really the basic thing with the vault is you begin by you can either start with the visual guide to phrasal verbs because this is like a uh, a small kind of, we could call it a microcosm. Uh, this just means like a small example of, of the whole thing where you're trying to learn one specific thing but you're learning it like a native speaker. Uh, and you will see all the lesson sets listed in your account on the first page that you see. Uh, or you could go to the index, uh, and that's also, uh, it should be right along like one of the top few pages that you see. Uh, but that will be the, the index of all the lesson sets. And so you can choose what you're interested in learning. So you could, if you want to focus on a particular grammar point, or you want to learn vocabulary about a specific subject, uh, and have conversations, uh, like understand like particular conversations about those subjects, then you can find those as well. But send us an email if you need uh, any help finding anything. Welcome to the program, though. Uh, let's see, and Ferdy says, what about an information and advice? Yeah, we would not say an information because we can't, we can't count an information. Hold, hold an information in your hand. You can have a piece of information or a bit of information, but we wouldn't say like an information. All right, so he's got lots of aha moments over there. <laughs> nice to see you there. All right, let's keep going. Uh, hi, I don't know why, but whenever I talk to native speakers, they thought I am native speaker too because of my pronunciation and just acting. Uh, then I feel pressured and I start panicking. <laughs> Yes, this is a common thing that will happen to a lot of people, uh, and this is why it's so important to be prepared for conversations. So if people, if you have good pronunciation, but maybe you don't feel confident about what you're saying, then this is why you should focus more on grammar or something like that, the, the actual problem you have that's stopping you from speaking. All right, but let's get back into more of these. Let's see, where do we go for, uh, kind of along this uh, number four cover here. Want to keep this moving? Well, we are at 30 minutes already. Oh my goodness, are we going to get through all 10 of these? All right, another one kind of related to uh, this specific thing is, is like the difference between the, the verb and the noun, like to explain and an explanation. So people will sometimes say like, thank you for your explain. Thank you for your explain. So thank you for, we'll just say your. So thank you for your explain. Thank you for your explain. Now, again, I want you to think about this like a native speaker. If it's a verb, I'm talking about doing something. Can I hold it in my hand at least like a, like a kind of idea even, I can hold it in my hand. So I can hold a marker in my hand. Thank you for your marker. Okay, so I gave a physical marker to someone. All right, so in that case, thank you for your explanation. So the explanation is the noun. That's like you could imagine like, you know, even, even figuratively, it's not going to be a physical thing like an explanation, but it's like here, here's an explanation. Like I could even have a sign on a board that's like some written information for it. Here's your explanation, okay? So if you're talking about like giving someone something, try to think about it the same way a native would as, as like a thing. Can you hold that thing or not? If you can, then it's a noun. And if you cannot, then it's a verb. So you can use both of these sentences, but listen how they're different. So this one, thank you for explaining. So I'm explaining something. So thank you for explaining. Thank you for explaining. Here I'm thanking the person for the verb, the, the thing that they're doing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for going. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for teaching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for playing basketball with me. Okay, so I'm thanking you for that particular thing. In that way, they both are basically nouns, but that way we're, 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 we're thinking about it like this is, the, this is like the, the thing. It becomes a thing that you can thank someone for. 
but we don't thank someone for the verb itself. We thank them for, you know, like the, the, the act of doing something. But I, I really want to make it clear this is not about memorizing the vocabulary or the grammar point or whatever. It's just to hear different examples and, and so you think, ah, like you, you will come to get that sense of correctness the same way natives have that. So little kids, when they hear this, they might say something like, thank you for, thank you for go, or thank you for come. And the parent would say, no, no, thank you for coming. And then they hear that, thank you for coming, thank you for giving, thank you for loving, thank you for playing. And then after getting all those examples, it's like, ah, okay, I understand. Or if I want to talk about a, a physical thing or even a, a, like an idea, so thank you for your or the explanation. Thank you for the explanation. So I can say both of these things, but you don't want to mix them up and just use like, we, we would never like thank someone like for a verb. You can't, you can't thank someone for a verb. Like, how do you do that? All right, I can't give someone a verb. I can give someone like an action I did in a, in a like a weird kind of way. Okay. So thank you for coming. I'm thanking you for like this thing that you did. I'm thanking you for that thing. But I'm not just like, like, thank you for come. I don't, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't say that. Thank you for coming. Thank you for going. Thank you for playing. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I can also just say thanks. Very simply, thanks. Thanks for whatever. All right. Any questions about that? Now, I have... Uh, many more to go over, but if people have specific questions about these, uh, let me know. But uh, remember, I'm going to repeat this again and again, but you don't want to spend a lot of time trying to remember a rule about this. It's just more like, think about it kind of logically the same way a native would. Thank you for coming. And as you get more examples, you will feel more confident about using that yourself. All right? All right. Uh, let's see. What are we up to? Uh, number five. So five, this is another common mistake I will see, and this is talking about things in general or in the present. So talking about something happening right now. Uh, let's see, what was my specific example? Uh, this was, so sometimes, so sometimes I have problems Sometimes I have problems, but I ignored them. All right? Sometimes I have problems, but I ignored them. Now here, we're talking about in general, sometimes I have something. So that means from sometime in the past up until now, we're continuing to have here's a problem, here's another problem, here's another problem, and probably in the future I will have maybe some other problems as well. So sometimes I have problems, but I ignored them. Now here we're confusing or we're, we're putting like the past back into something where we, and I'll, I'll actually give a few examples of these, uh, of these things where people are kind of using too much or making it more difficult to understand when we're talking about something. But you only need really one example of a grammar point and, and, or like a tense or whatever, and that really works for the whole sentence, all right? So sometimes I have problems, but I ignore them because it's something you, you continue to do and it probably will happen in the future as well. So we want to have this agreement between the tenses. So if I played basketball yesterday, like yesterday I played basketball, uh, but I will do good. It's like, wait a minute, you said you played, but you will do something. You have two different tenses in the same sentence. Okay? So here, remember that when we're, we, we, we have a sentence built around a particular tense. So, and, and you don't even have to think about tenses. It's just more like, when does it happen? Like, did it happen already? Is it still happening now? Will it happen in the future? All right. So sometimes I have problems, but I ignore them. Sometimes I have problems, but I ignore them. All right. We're, just, we're speaking in general about this. All right. Or we could be even speaking about right now, like around this time, like today I had some problems, 
All right, and again, you hear I had some problems, so I'm still speaking about here's now with me talking, and I'm talking about like here's today. So I had some problems today, but I ignored them. All right, so in that sense, it's in, I'm still talking about the past, but I'm agreeing within the sentence. Okay, so as you, as you prepare for these things, the, really the best basic advice I can give is to really focus on these things uh, at the basic level. All right, so really simple sentences. We'll cover some more of that uh, in this video. But again, people don't want to review basic stuff. They think they know it, but then they say the wrong thing in, in situations or, you know, in writing or whatever. All right, but the important thing is to understand those issues or understand the, like the grammar point or the vocabulary like a native because you've reviewed it, you understood it so well that now you can use it without thinking. All right, so sometimes I have problems, but I ignore them. All right, and remember, like, sometimes I have problems. So we want to make the sentence even more basic so we really understand it. Sometimes I have problems. You could even remove sometimes. I have problems. If you feel confident about using this, then you can start answering or asking or, or adding more information to the sentence. But we really want to make sure you understand, like, what are you talking about and when did it happen? So I have problems. It could mean in general, like, oh, right now I have, I have problems. In the same way, I have a dog. I have a dog, like I, I have one. And my, my, I might not be physically holding it, but I have a dog about, like uh, in, my, in my house or whatever. Okay. So uh, we'll again cover a few more things related to this. But remember, master these basic things, and I promise, if you got like a hundred examples of I have something, you would feel very confident about using that. And then you would want to add more things like, I have problems, but uh, I don't like thinking about them. So I can add more, I can explain more, make it a little bit more interesting, but only if I feel confident about the core, what is the core of the sentence. I have problems, but, so I have problems and, Maybe, I don't know, I have problems and some people can help me with those. I have a book. Yeah, very simple. I have a book. And people might think, well, this is easy. It's like, no, it's not, it's not easy if people are still making mistakes about basic things like this. Remember that understanding and speaking are two different skills. You can understand what people are saying, but can you use those same things in your conversations? That's the question. All right. Let's see if I had any questions about that. Uh, for what is the, no, let's see, what is your view on chat GPT for correcting grammar? Uh, I've never used chat GPT for correcting grammar. Uh, I would, I would prefer like Google for that. Um, and the simple way is like just seeing what they, what they give you. You might want to check between both Google and chat GPT, but often you will find examples of, of real life usages of something. And remember that when you're looking for examples of grammar, like don't write a really long sentence into Google, like look for the, the very core thing and then try to build that out. Like we have this here. So I have problems. If I put, I have problems in Google, I will, I will probably find thousands of examples of that. And then by reading those examples, I will feel very confident that yes, this is correct. Other people are using it like that. But if I write a really long sentence, I'm not going to find many examples. So usually sentences are broken into little phrases and you can search for those things individually. So I have problems with, go ahead and type that into Google and it will auto complete like, I have problems with my children. I have problems with money. I have problems with school. I have problems with bullying. I have problems with, I don't know, how to organize the furniture in my house or something, all right? But you will find lots of examples, and this is actually a good way, using Google's autocomplete uh, to, to give you examples of not only naturally varied review, but the kinds of things that are correct, all right? So I would not, I would probably not trust uh, ChatGPT without correcting that or getting some other examples from something else, like some other sources as well. 
let's see. Fabio says, how to change things when things don't change. Yeah, so that's another good example. In the right way, for is a preposition, so we use an ing form after all prepositions. Yeah, uh, Khadija, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be trying to think about like what the grammar rule is. If you ask natives if that's true, they're going to think like, well, maybe this is correct or that's not correct uh, or something. They will, they will look for examples where that's not correct. So you want to be understanding things and then get deeper in your understanding uh, as you get more examples. Uh, often like people have, if you're, if you're thinking about what the rule is, you will probably be thinking about a rule in conversations and then you will get like, you know, you will get stuck. So he says, what about if I ignore this, I'm going to have problems. Yes. So in that case, like you can use the present also to talk about something like if I do something, we're talking about the future, uh, then I will have problems. Yeah. Or I'm going to have problems. All right. From Tunisian, I see there, I have a book. Uh, advise means to give information to someone. Advice is giving information. Yes. Uh, so that's another thing I didn't I didn't like cover that. I was just talking about is is advice by itself countable or not. Uh, I've been struggling until I find your channel. Well, welcome to the welcome to the family. <laughs> it's glad to help people. Uh, all right, what are we doing now? Let's see. We did the present and in general. Now we're on to number six here, and this is another example. Uh, another example. I know people people don't like. It's like people want to speak correctly. They know it's important to speak correctly, but they don't like to review. I don't know why not. I, I love to get I love to get basic review. Maybe I'm weird like that. Like I, I was just reviewing some basic Japanese yesterday. I was just like getting a bunch of examples of basic Japanese sentences. It's like even even a simple word, like do we use it with this or with that thing? And I'm, I'm trying to ask different questions and, and figure out like am I using this correctly or not? Or maybe I learned some new uses. Um, but again, these are the things that get you fluent. And if you feel confident and you really understand something, that's when you speak and that's when you can start adding more difficult things uh, to your sentences. This is especially important uh, if you're using business English, like if you're using English professionally, like if, uh, if you're an academic or you need to even just write. Maybe you don't even speak with people, but if you were uh, grammatically incorrect, that's really going to hurt. All right, uh, so let's see. Let's, we talked, let's see, number six here. Uh, last year, I take T A as a K a So last year, last year I take a job. Last year I take a job. All right, so we have the past and the present or talking about things in general. Last year I take a job. Now this is an example of basic incorrect just use of the past tense. What should be used instead of take here? What should be used instead of take? So last year I, and everyone should be thinking this, if you can't get it automatically and quickly, then that means you need to review it. All right. Last year I took a job. Last year I took a job. Last year I took a job. All right. So this is another example of even if we even if we remove this and talk about when it happened, I take a job. We're talking about like in general or something, or like I, like I just took a job. We would rarely ever say I take a job. Uh, that would be like I take a job if. I don't know, like I would take a job. We, we would, you would rarely ever hear I take a job. But I took a job or I will take a job, you will, you will hear those. You can also hear I got a job, but that's the same example where we're using the simple past. So I got, I got a job. All right, we don't say I get a job, I got a job. When to use taken, so that's a, like a higher, higher level of it, but like I have taken, uh, if you're talking about in the past, so right, let's say right now, this is now, and we have the future over here and the past over here. Let's say, for example, that I had a job here, like I was a zookeeper. 
So I worked in a zoo here. So you can say, I have taken, I have taken jobs at the zoo. <laughs> or I have taken a job at the zoo if it's just one job. All right, so I have that experience. If you want to learn more about this specific grammar point, I recommend the, uh, I made a video on YouTube a while ago, I think it was about different uses of have, but look for that video. Uh, and also Fluent for Life covers all this. So if you can look for specific have, like if, you're, if, if your biggest problem is grammar, like you, you don't really care so much about learning more vocabulary, but you want to really understand grammar very well, then focus on the grammar in lessons. All right, but you can use the index to find the specific lessons that cover those things. So I have, like I have had this job before. I have, I have had, like I have had a job as a zookeeper before, or I have taken. All right, but you would be having connect with both of those. It just means like you hold that experience. So as a native, a native would think about it that way. All right. But again, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it's just another example of mastering the basics. And if you review that, like get some very simple sentences and like I did something. So I played, even if you don't have, you know, we can have a two word sentence. I ate, I played. And I want you to just think about it like imagine when it's happening. So you don't need to make a long sentence but just imagine, like, what did I do yesterday? <clears throat> yesterday, I typed. Yesterday, I ate. Yesterday, I swam. Yesterday, I read. Yesterday, I watched. And then, as you get good at, at just making even the simple verb for that, <clears throat> then you can add something else. So, I watched TV. I ate pasta. I swam, uh, I swam in the pool. So you can make something longer than that, all right? So, or like a phrasal verb example like that one, like I woke up early, I woke up early, okay? But again, don't be fancy, don't try to make a long sentence before you really feel confident using the pieces of that sentence. If you're, if you're trying to be fancy, then you will have much more uh, difficulty using these things in your conversations. All right, uh, I have problems with my friends. Yep, there you go. Hi, I'm Ed from Wisconsin. Want to, uh, want to ask, when uh, is your next lesson? So probably Monday, Japan time. Uh, in September, I will go on vacation to Europe. These classes are uh, training to prepare for that reality. Thank you. Yeah, glad to hear. Enjoy your vacation. Can I use last year I accomplished? Well, again, again, this would be like the past tense. You, I accomplished you wouldn't really say you accomplished a job. I guess you could you could say that I accomplished something. If there's like like when when we talk about job like like a mission where you have to do something. So yesterday or last year someone hired me to I don't know paint their house. So it's like a specific thing I have to do. It's not like working at McDonald's. I wouldn't say like I accomplished my job at McDonald's. I mean it's just like I go to work every day and do things. I'm not, it's not like I'm finished with the job. It's just work that I continue to do. So accomplish typically means it's like a thing you did and then it's, and it's done. It's finished. So I accomplished something. That's mercy. Why you skip my question? Again, why did you skip my question? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Mercy. Get, show me some mercy over here. Mercy. Let's see, rolling those eyes, give me the rolly eyes. Let's see here, where is your, where is your question? Mercy, mercy says took. Uh, I'm good at written, but had trouble speaking, but have trouble, how do I solve? Ah, okay. Yes, forgive me if we get uh, a lot of comments and I'm like, I can't, I'm, I physically have to uh, scroll through these various things over here. But don't give me the rolly eyes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see, I'm good at written. So you mean you're good at writing. I'm good at writing, or you can say I'm good at written English, but I'm like, I'm good at writing is fine. Uh, your writing is, is not good here, but, uh, but, have, but I have trouble spoken part. How do I solve? So again, this is you not understanding the language well enough. 
Uh, and typically, like I, I would, I would like to see some of your writing as well, other than these comments here. Uh, but probably you have many errors in your writing as well. And usually if people are making mistakes in their writing, they're also making those same mistakes when they speak. Uh, but the, the whole point of, of understanding everything from my videos is to understand things like a native. So if you don't understand like a native or you were thinking, uh, like thinking through your native language and translating, that's where you're going to get stuck. So you must disconnect from your native language and learn everything in English. And I've got lots of videos on the channel that explain how to do this. <clears throat> uh, why do you pronounce the final T in last year like a, like a, in last, last year, like a CH sound? In last year, last year, like a CH sound. I don't know what you mean by that. Like where, where, where was that? Good morning, teacher from India. It should be skipped, right? It should be skipped, right? <laughs> yes, it'd be S K I P P E D. Skipped. Uh, let's see. And I, oh, I, I skipped somebody else's question as well. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Fabio, Fabio didn't get his question answered. You guys are like, let's see. I love to see the picture of Mount 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 Fiji. You mean Mount Fuji? Is that it? Was that your question? I don't know what you mean by that. But if I, if I ever skip your question, just answer it again. <laughs> I'm rarely uh, just ignoring people. Uh, but I may not notice something if I'm trying to be. There are a lot of things to think about as I'm going through these over here. About the book switch. I don't know what that means, though, about the book switch. What is that? Like, oh, you, oh, you mean you bought a book called Switch? Like the name of the book? The name of the book Switch? Like, like the, uh, I think, isn't that like Chip and Dan Heath? Uh, if that's the book you're talking about? Drew, what's your favorite song? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have a favorite song. I, there are a lot of songs I like, but I, I can't can't think of a uh, like a favorite favorite song. Explosive awareness and um, remember me of the last one. Yesterday I came. Oh my goodness, that's it. Yes. Okay. Well, hopefully you're enjoying the book. All right, uh, let's keep moving. Let's see. Uh, so another thing that's related to this, so this is going to be number seven here. Number seven. Uh, and I talked to uh, subscribers about this yesterday, uh, and this was like, let's see, what was the specific example? So what did you... What did you said? What did you said? Now this is a common question that I will get uh, and it's a, an, an incorrect construction of this. So what did you say? And what I explained to people uh, in that mail is that like there should only be one D. And this is the same thing we just covered a little bit before about you only need one example of the tense to make that understandable for the whole sentence. So what did you say? What did you say? So we have one D right here. We don't need this second D over here. So we wouldn't say, what did you played? We've got two Ds in there. You don't need the double D. We already know it's the past tense from this. So if we're talking about the past, what did you say? What did you say? What did you do? What did you do? What did you say? What did you play? All right, so you only need one D in these. If you're asking about the past and you use did, just one D. All right, so don't double the D. We don't need D and D over here. Now, these are some past uh, words uh, just to give you, make it a little bit easier. Obviously, like a word like go, like went doesn't have a D in it, but what did you went? We wouldn't say, what did you went? We'd say, what did you go? Or where did you go? Where did you go? But try to make this very simple. If you have one example over there and that's the tense for the sentence, you don't need to, you don't need to make that any more like obvious or clear, okay? So what did you say? What did you say? And as you hear many examples of this, you can put this into Google, like, what did you put that into Google and it will give you an autocomplete for uh, a bunch of different examples. All right. What did you do? What did you eat? What did you play? What did you see? Where did you go? All right. So you can start changing these around 
Instead of what, we can say who. Who did you see? Who did you meet? Where did you go? All right. Or why? Why did you go? And this is what I mean about naturally varied review, where you're getting lots of different examples that really help you understand things, and they, they, the point is to make you know it so well that you use it automatically without trying to think about a rule or you know something in your native language. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense. All right, let's see if I missed anybody else. All right, my brain always tend to translate. Yes, so saying you would say, my brain always tends, T-E-N-D-S. So again, my brain does this. And this is why it's important, like if you're making a more complex sentence like that, like tend, so my brain like X tends to. It's the same rule for any other verb. So like he, he tends to. And now we're going to make it more complicated. My brain, my brain, my brain tends to do something. So my brain tends to, uh, you know, whatever. So you could make it even a more simple. So I, I tend to, I tend to get confused. And this is why it's so important to focus on these basic things. So when you see an example like that, if someone was applying for a job or trying to get a promotion or something, and they used like, so tend to, that's great. That's like really good, uh, like high level English. All right. But if you use it incorrectly, then people will think, well, you're, you're, you're kind of like reaching, like you're reaching too far. Like you, you can't actually... You can't use that thing correctly, all right? So you should be, like, if you're going to use more advanced vocabulary, you better use it correctly, okay? So it, it could be just a typo or something, but I'm, I'm giving lots of examples of uh, basic grammar errors, but you can see these all in the comments even in this video. And a lot of these people, most people watching this can understand what I'm saying, all right? You see why this is so important? You see how many errors are showing up in the, in the comments, all right? And they're all basic. They're all basic errors, all right? But this is really important, so great. Uh, it was a great comment, but just making sure people are understanding things. So my brain always, see so you're making the, the, like making it more complicated. So my brain always tends to translate. Uh, uh, hard to let go of this habit, okay? So my brain always tends to translate, and then you would say it's, hard to let go of this habit. It's hard to let go of this habit, all right? So the idea is great. It's an advanced idea, but the grammar is incorrect. And so that, that kind of like, it, it deflates what you're saying a little bit, especially in your writing, all right? Now this is, is not me trying to be mean. It's just giving more examples of, look, like lots of people have these issues and it's just because usually the, the traditional way that people are learning languages they spend like one day on something and then they go to the next lesson the next day. Why? You should be spending many times on that same thing until you really understand it. If you can understand something very quickly, that's great. But typically grammar, the, the ability to use grammar correctly uh, comes from like the, the habit that you acquire of doing it again and again. All right, and sometimes you might need to hear a word many, many times in different ways, and finally one of them clicks in your mind. You think, ah, now I got it. Now I got it. All right, but hopefully this makes sense, and you will see uh, lots of these, lots of these same things. So if your if your if your grammar ability, or I guess you say your grammar ability down here, uh, but your vocabulary is up here, you need to lift this one up. Okay. And grammar is what you should really be focused on. Uh, let's see if I missed anybody else. Yes, uh, past, present versus present, uh, past, perfect, so tough. Yes, but try, try not to think about like the grammar point. Just think about what, what people are saying. 
Uh, Duran says, these lessons gave me hope to learn native English. Yes, native English is everywhere. It's, it's even right here on YouTube if you look for content for natives. But again, it's possible to learn it, and this is how you should be learning if you want to, if you want to speak. It's not difficult. The more difficult thing is trying to learn English as a second language. All right, uh, Fabio, yes, Drew, uh, you did say the name of the writer. Okay, yes, I think it's two, two brothers, I think. Uh, Anne says, what would be your advice about reductions? Do we have to learn them in order to become fluent? <clears throat> well, yes, you would, you would uh, learn reductions certainly to understand native speakers. Uh, but it's like when I'm teaching my children, uh, like they, they will hear some things from me again and again and again, and I blend my speech more even, I don't know, like, like super fast as I give them examples. For example, I will say, what did you do? Look at that. I don't double D. It's just one D. So what did you do today? I ask my kids this every day when I come home. So they, uh, they are, you know, they're at school or they're playing or whatever. What did you do today? When I'm first uh, explaining this or teaching it to them. I'm very slow, very clear. What did you do today? Just so they can understand what I'm saying. Now, if you're a learner, you might hear someone say this. You might want to read the transcript to understand exactly what the person is saying. But as they grow older, I start saying this faster because they understand the situation. They know what the words are without me having to clearly say them all. So at first, I might say, what did you do today? And then I might say, what'd you do today? What'd you do today? Wa, ja, do today. So do, da, day. What'd you do today? 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 So I will come home, hey, what'd you do today? What'd you do today? And they understand, I mean, what did you do today? And they can answer that very easily, all right? But it's after I've gotten uh, lots of practice or have given them lots of practice with that. So if you're trying to learn reductions or whatever, <clears throat> or any kind of sound blending, uh, understand what the words are first, and then think about how you might want to say that faster. So we start eliminating things. It's almost like you have a, like a sculpture. So we have, we have a piece of rock like this, and we start eliminating parts of it until we're finally left with this little thing here. All right, that's what we're doing with these sentences. So if I say what what did like we don't need what what it, what did you do today? That already sounds better. I remove the t. What did you do today? Listen to the difference. What what did you do today? It's just more difficult to say. Just like the first example I gave, number one in this list was an versus a. So an umbrella, a unicorn, all right? It's just much easier to say. Which is, what, what is the easier thing to say? So what did you do today? I can pronounce it very clearly and slowly, or if people understand what I'm talking about, oh, what'd you do today? What'd you do today? So what? What did, same thing, what, what do you, what do you do today? So what did you do today? And this becomes even easier to say. What'd you do today? What'd you do today? What'd you do today? All right, but that's how you learn reductions and things. So you should understand what people are saying and then how can I, how can I make it faster? And you can even try to think about this yourself. So look at sentences, how can I make this easier to say myself? And then you can compare with what a native might say and see, ah, am I thinking, am I reducing things myself more like a native speaker? All right, uh, let's see here. I remember this subject when I was in elementary, yes. <laughs> so a lot of, like, most people don't, don't review it very much, and that's why they forget these things. So it's like building a house. If the foundation is not strong, the house will collapse. Yes, Lee, that's exactly it. Yep, the foundation. All right, so all the basic grammar, all those things, that's what holds all of the sentences together. So if you say something that's clever or like an advanced phrasal verb or something, uh, people will be impressed by that 
but they will not, it's like the, 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 the surprise or feeling uh, like impressed, that feeling will go down if you don't use it correctly. All right, let's see. Uh, I see native pronounce the final, see natives pronounce the final T at the beginning of the word like CH sound. For example, last year, last year, they say last, last year. Ah, so like last, and this is an example of how people would be, how would people would be connecting these. So last, let's see, last year. What they're really doing is, is connecting both of these together. So the last and the year, we eliminate like the T uh, and make like a CH right here. Last year, last year, last year, last year. And again, it's just because it's easier to say. People understand what we're saying, so we don't need to speak so clearly like a robot. Last year. But notice, this is what I call the, the one rule for pronunciation. So people who have speak like me or the native fluency blueprint or fluent for life will have this. But this is about <coughs> learning how natives are connecting these different things. All right. So I've already taught this many, many times. You can find it in those lessons. But it's basically just la, last year, last year, last year. And even if we have a, a kind of CH sound there, we don't overpronounce that. It's not like last ch, last year. We don't say it like that. It's just last year. So it kind of sounds like that last year. So you have a good ear for that, but don't overpronounce it. This is why we do it though. It's just to make it easier and faster to say. That's the whole reason we do that. Uh, let's see, Drew, you are underrated. Thank you, Dran. Glad to hear it. If you know other people uh, who would enjoy what we do, send them our way. And rate us higher. Give us a like. Everybody click that like button. Uh, are phrasal verbs considered informal and not uh, recommended for professional communication? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, phrasal verbs are used everywhere, uh, in, especially in professional communication. And in the visual guide to phrasal verbs, there are lots of uh, examples from business as well. And even in like the specific business lesson sets, so like business communication uh, or entrepreneurship or other things that we cover, you will find lots of phrasal verbs in those lessons. So it's, it's not like a, a casual thing. Slang is a bit more casual, uh, but phrasal verbs are absolutely essential if you want to speak uh, correctly and also understand native speakers. I saw I had switched your article video, but I still have some doubts, like take this example, a green plant and the plant is green. Why did we use uh in the first clause, even when the plant is specific? A green, a green plant and the plant is green. Well, if we're, if we're just talking about a plant, like not all plants are green, some plants are not green. But if we're, it depends on that specific situation. I don't know if that's quoting a video or you're just giving me that example. Uh, but if we say a green plant, like I'm, I'm probably showing you some kind of thing. So if I'm introducing just like a black marker, a green plant, it's the same idea. So I can give you like, this is a black marker. I'm just introducing it to you. This is a black marker. This is not uh, like the famous black marker that, uh, I don't know, wrote some special thing or something like that. It's just a black marker. Nothing special about it. But once I introduce it, so this is a black marker. This is a red marker. This is a blue marker. And now I want to talk about this one. The black marker, uh, I got the black marker yesterday. So now we know we're talking about this marker. So this is the black marker that we're talking about. Or let's say yesterday you and I were talking and I said, hey, I bought a black marker. I bought a black marker. So there are many black markers and I bought one of them. And then today I show it to you. Look, this is the black marker. And the meaning is this is the black marker I bought yesterday. So I bought this marker yesterday. I told you about that. So you already know what marker I'm talking about. Hey, look, this is it. This is the black marker. But if I try to introduce something like, look, this is the bottle. And a native speaker would look at me funny. They would mean, what, what do you mean, the bottle? Like, what, like, am I supposed to know about that thing? But if I say, this is a bottle, then a native speaker understands, ah, I'm just introducing something. Now I will talk about this bottle. All right, so this is a marker, this is a marker, this is a marker. 
Now, I know these are basic things that people cover, but people just don't know them well enough, and that's why they continue to, to use them incorrectly. I want you to speak fluently and to use the correct grammar without thinking and translating or hesitating or thinking like, oh no, is that word order correct? Or do I have to organize a sentence in my head? It's much easier if you begin with something small and then start adding to that sentence. And that way you know exactly where you're having trouble. So if I can say, I like, I like, just that, like very simple, like I like something, or I eat, I play. I can make a very simple sentence about that, or I also feel confident changing like the person. So we, we really want to work with subject verb agreement, which is something that might not be in every language. And so I can say, oh, I like, he likes. I like this marker. Do you like this marker? He likes this marker. She likes this marker. They like this marker. Now, I know this sounds simple, but even if I'm just repeating these things, you will hear them again and again. Uh, and as you hear them as well, uh, you will feel much more confident about using these. Uh, let's see. All right, hopefully. All right, I got that correctly. All right, Red Goat again, you're opening my eyes on a new phrase of manipulating English. You can say you're opening my eyes to something, all right? You're opening my eyes to something. Now, this is a specific phrase to open your eyes to something. Like I'm like aiming this way and I open my eyes. So I'm opening my eyes to something, all right? I'm opening my eyes to something. Very good though. How do we use the past perfectly? Yeah, I don't wanna cover that in this specific video. I have covered it before. I also covered it in Fluent for Life. Um, but this video is really about like very even basic things that people are still struggling with. Uh, Sayuri, nice to see you there. <clears throat> I find myself started making very foundational grammar errors in speaking these days, okay? So here, here's like another, like, so Sayuri has a higher level of English, but she still has basic mistakes in the, in the sentence here. So I find myself starting, or you can just say, I find myself making basic mistakes. So I find myself starting to make, which means like before you were not making these mistakes and now you are. So I don't know what, what specifically you mean, but uh, so these are again, why we focus on trying to be short and clear and specific. That way we can be correct. And if we know we're correct, we can start adding to that specific thing. So let's read the whole, uh, the whole thing. So I find myself starting, or I guess uh, maybe starting, starting to make uh, very foundational grammar errors in speaking these days like they does or she does. Yeah, so that, that's subject verb agreement, uh, which I never do in writing. Maybe I become more conscious of my own mistakes. Yes, this is also another problem. Like, uh, remember that each of these skills are different. So you might be good at writing or good at understanding what other people say, but it's a different thing when you're the one speaking. It's like if I get in a... Uh, riding in a car with someone. I can, I can follow someone, like maybe they're driving uh, wherever, but if I have to drive myself, then I really have to think more and, and there's a lot of information I will probably forget. So this is why we want to review things and, and get like the foundational stuff really good, really strong, so that way you don't have to worry about those things in conversations. But there are, you could have other things, like if any anytime I speak Japanese with my mother-in-law, I might like use some incorrect Japanese because she'll give me like kind of evil look <laughs> and it makes me feel nervous. And I'm like, ah, I forgot my Japanese. But then I, I speak to someone else and I say the correct thing. So sometimes that just happens. Uh, but if, if, you're, if you're experiencing that a lot, then it means you need to go back and review. Uh, review the basics until you're just like, I really got it now. All right, so I, I love to review the basics. Again, it's like, it's like practicing a punch, like over and over and over again, all right? Now you might try to do it in slightly different ways, which I recommend, so you get different sentences of this, all right? So look, like, uh, I'm looking for basic sentences like I like, all right? You go to Google, you type in I like, and then you can find, like, uh, it will give you tons of, uh, like, autocompletes for those particular things. Um, let's see. I got that already. Uh, Chris Yoga, I have to make myself fluent in English to get a good job because I want to leave my current worst job. It's your worst job, like the worst one? Oh, no. Uh, but yes, that's another good reason to learn. Uh, let's see, we got some Cyrillic there, which I can't read. Uh, your teachings are amazing. How can I join? 
Oh, if you're talking about uh, like Fluent for Life or any of the other programs we have, just click on the link in the description below this video. Most of what I do on YouTube is trying to explain to people about how they should be learning because so many people are still learning English the traditional way. So they're learning English as a second language rather than learning it as a first language. I'm actually working on a new uh, video series that goes over all of this about how people should learn. I'll be releasing that soon. Um, but. But yes, if you'd like to learn more uh, or get Frederick, Frederick is a really great way to help children as well uh, learn English all in English from the very beginning. So it teaches grammar and pronunciation and listening and uh, vocabulary as well. Uh, let's see. George Chan says he liked this marker. Is it to imply he does not like this marker now? Yes, that's correct. Or you could just like in, in that sense, uh, without more context, like I could be talking about someone else like uh, conversationally, if I met a friend of mine yesterday uh, and I say, or I'm, let's say I'm talking to you. So I say, look, George, like, do you like this marker? And you say, yeah, yeah I like this marker. And I said, oh, my friend, uh, he liked this marker too, you know. I, like you might hear it conversationally. It's like some people will, will use it that way, but yes, you would probably just say like he likes it also if he continues to like it. Because if, if the marker is not changing, it's, it's, not, it's, it's a little bit different from uh, like, like how you feel about something. So it, it's not, it's, it's not like, like my friend used to like this movie, but now he doesn't anymore. Like the marker isn't really, it's, you don't really feel differently about a marker. Maybe you could, but probably not. So, oh, my friend liked like this marker too. You know, like I was talking with him yesterday, he said he liked the marker. So we would, it's, you could use both of those and, and it would be correct. It just depends on the, the situation. Uh, let's see. Dran, I hope you include lessons or examples of how to respond to greetings or questions, short or brief lessons, the usual response of a native English speaker. Uh, yes, Dran, if you're talking about uh, Fluent for Life, then yes, we've got, there are like 13, I don't know, probably 13,000 uh, like native words and expressions in that covered across the different uh, conversations that we feature. So yes, if you're, if you're looking for like, how do we say hello to people or how do we say goodbye or when we're talking to things like that, it's, if you just watch native speakers have conversations and you analyze them very carefully, you can learn a lot and then, and then just review that information. So you will learn a lot in there. Uh, sorry to board you, Drew, with the book. Yeah, I don't know, Fabio, I think you're still talking about the book. I don't know, did you have a question about it? I don't know, Nils is gone. Nils, sorry, so tired today. Good night and thank you, Drew. See you next week. All right, this is uh, the most popular language is the wrong English. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Hello from Brazil. Is there anyone else here from Brazil? Yes, there are probably many people from Brazil. Uh, this is a good channel. What about... For us teachers, are you selling any material? I thought about doing like a, a teaching thing about that, but you can learn. Uh, I mean, you you will have to read between the lines a little bit. But if you watch what I do, there are basic principles about uh, how to teach, uh, and especially depending on the level you have. So if you if you if you get Frederick, you can see how the lessons are taught. Like uh, the whole point is to understand. Uh, What's the best way to explain it? The, the basic idea is that you're trying to teach, like how would you teach aliens, like outer space aliens, uh, the, the English language? And so you can't use any translations. How do you make the language understandable? So you have to build a foundation of understandable things, and then you can use that language to teach other things as well. Uh, so I don't, I don't have, I used to actually years ago, I had more stuff for teachers, but I don't do that anymore. Um, but you can watch the video on, the ch uh, on this channel about uh, how to teach English as a first language. Let's see. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, so we have, all right, we're already at 83 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Let's be quick about this. Uh, so we got through seven, I think. We'll go to eight, which is another example of a common thing that people mistake in a very basic error. And just like we covered the single example of having a grammar point like one time, uh, like uh, if I will go, I will tell you. 
What's the problem with this sentence? What's the problem with this sentence? What's the problem with this sentence? If I will go, I will tell you. So if I will go to the party, I will, I will tell you. Just like the previous examples, we don't need two examples of the future. Oh, yeah. Just one is fine. So if I go, I will tell you. You can say that. Uh, or if I will go, uh, like you can say, like, I'll tell you. But typically, we just say, if I go, if I go, I will tell you. Or you can just make it shorter, I'll tell you. Well, Kant says, sometimes I hear people say, what was that? Yep, yeah, shouldn't have two wills. Uh, sometimes I hear people say, if you will do that. Yeah, I mean, you could, it, it would be correct, but you don't ever uh, have, to, have to, you don't have to use both of those. There shouldn't be both of those in there. So if you, if you will do that, yeah. So if, so if you will go, like it's, you, you could say that, but native speakers would rarely say that. They just say, if you go. And then the future is, is added in, like, what are you talking about? So if you go, please get me something. All right? So if, like, this is already, like, this already means the future. We're talking about something else. Okay? But this is, again, another example of we don't need, like, you don't want to mix the two different tenses in the same sentence, and you don't need to repeat yourself. Just like we wouldn't say, like, did played, we don't need like will and will. So just one time is fine. And the more examples you get, the easier this is to understand. Now in this video, I'm trying to be quick so I can go through a bunch of these and answer questions at the same time. Uh, but when you get more review and you can take certain things that you personally struggle with and you can find more of those. Yes, so we've got different, and I, I, don't, I don't even want to get people thinking about like, well, this is the zero conditional or whatever. Like you could do that, but if most people like who know those rules, they will still make mistakes in the actual sentences. So it's better just to think about them like a native. Uh, can you tell me which days are you teach? You can say which days uh, do you teach or on which days you have lessons. Uh, typically I'm on Monday and Thursday here. Uh, in Japan around this time. But uh, today is a Friday. And I just had like a mistake uh, on the, the, like the day. <laughs> I came yesterday. I was like, yes, let's, we're going to teach. I was excited. And then, no, I couldn't do it. Uh, but here we are today. So special surprise, I guess. Uh, so yes, you're welcome. Let's see someone else uh, more. All right, so hopefully everybody gets this. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I just want to show, and you can see even in the comments right in this, uh, in this video that like people are using more advanced, like their, their vocabulary level is higher than their grammar level. Yes, I know some people were. <laughs> yes, I know some people were, were expecting a thing yesterday, and this is why I don't like scheduling lessons. So if I have it, great. If not, well, you know, it happens. And also, all the videos, I save them so people can watch them whenever they like. All right. Uh, so very quickly, let's see here. We'll do... Oh, we've got only two more left to do. So we did like uh, eight, and then we got nine. So this one, uh, this is a little bit more uh, higher level, but uh, people will also make mistakes with this. And so this is on time versus in time. So if I say I have a project, uh, again, I want you to think about this like a native speaker. So let's say today, or we could even say now, and then like next week, like next Friday, uh, I, have to, I have to like finish a project or deliver something. Uh, if you're talking about delivering something on time, Remember on, we're talking about like a, a point, a physical thing like boom, right here. So if I need to meet you at this time, so I'm meeting you at 10 o'clock and I arrive at 10 o'clock, boom, I am right on time. 
I'm on time, just like I'm standing on it, like that, on time, all right? But in time, in is when we have some kind of space or range. So I have all of this time to finish a project. So if I get the project, my boss says, hey, Drew, here is a project for you. I want you to finish that by next Friday. So by next Friday, you have this, like, this whole time to finish it. I could finish it now. Maybe it only takes me uh, five minutes to do the project. So it took me five minutes. Look at that. I finished it in time. I finished it in time. So any time between when I get the, the assignment or the mission or whatever and when it needs to be completed, that's in this time. Just like I can physically hold something. It's in here. But if I get it done, like right then, I can say I did it on time. Now this is just to help you think about it like a native. So let's say I finish it, you know, like a day before, like I finished it on time. All right, you can still say that, but I'm just trying to get you to understand how natives are thinking about this. All right, any questions about that? As I look through the chat a little bit more. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, let's see. Yeah, don't trash talk if you don't know how to box. Yes, it's a, it's a similar idea for, for it's better to not to use more uh, difficult language if you can't like express it correctly. Uh, I need buddies to practice English. I'm totally out of practice. Uh, no, you do not. You do not need buddies. The buddies that you need are like just lots of examples that you can find anywhere. Google, Google can help you. Chat GPT can help you. Uh, our lessons obviously can help you as well, and they're all structured to, to give you naturally varied review. Don't look for other people to do that. That's just going to make you uh, spend more time when you should be just getting more examples of things. And so you can get examples in text, in video, or whatever, uh, and that's all you need to really understand things. Remember that the goal here is to understand the language really well. Because if you just repeat something, I could, I could take like a grammar point and just repeat it and say it again and again. But if I don't really feel confident, if I don't have that, that aha moment where I really understand something, then I won't feel confident using it. All right. So it doesn't matter if I repeat something like I'm going to say the word 10 times. I could still make a mistake in conversations if I don't really feel confident about that word. So the, the goal is really to understand something very well so you feel confident about using it. So don't worry about like having a practice partner or whatever. It's not necessary. Uh, it's a scorching summer in our area. Is that uh, correct, my sentence? Or you could say, is my sentence correct? Yes. It's a scorching summer in our area, and it would just be like much more conversational to just say it's a scorching summer. So people can guess you're talking about, you know, your own place. Often I will notice this, like non-native speakers, they will say more than they need to. Often it's understood. You don't need to say the things that are understood. All right, Japanese is like that as well, uh, where like they have even less than English. It's just like, they'll just say like go. <laughs> like the, the whole sentence will be just go. And you're like, uh, who are you talking about? I don't understand what you're talking about. But most times in the conversation, people do understand. Uh, can you talk briefly about the order of tenses in a sentence when you have multiple tenses in a sentence in, uh, in details is indeed amazing, but I don't think we have the time. Uh, I might, I might want to, might save that for another video unless you have a specific example that you want me to cover right here, Kent. So if you think of a sentence, uh, feel free just to make that a little bit easier. The on and in makes sense. Glad to hear. Yeah. Yeah, you can say both of those. Like it made sense or it makes sense. Both of those are correct. All right. Hi, first time here in a live. I've watched many of your videos. Great content from Venezuela. Glad to hear. Uh, so what's the difference between she arrived on time and she arrived in time? It's the same thing. So if, if, I, if, if a meeting is in five minutes or something and someone arrives, like you're, if, you're, if you arrive at this point, you arrived on time. Now, technically, you could be, you're really like on time, like any time before, before the actual start of the meeting. So you could, you could be like on time at each of these points. It's okay, like we could be on time for the meeting. But typically on time is more like in, in a, when, when natives are saying you're on time, they mean like a kind of range around that specific moment. 
So if you get here like really early, you're just early. Like this is like early, on time, late. Okay. So this whole period up here, you're, you're still on time for the meeting because you're not late. All right. But typically natives are talking about, they, they don't like, no, nobody really arrives to a, like a 10 o'clock meeting at 10 o'clock. You would be kind of late actually. <laughs> I know it sounds a little bit weird, but it's when the, the point of this video is to help you think about these things like a native speaker. And so when natives are thinking about it, and, and I'm, I'm explaining it to you, uh, even though natives would probably not really explain it like this. It's just a subconscious automatic thing. So if I get to a meeting, so the meeting, let's say, is 10 o'clock, and I'm here at uh, 9.50, I'm on time for that meeting, all right? And I can still say, so I can say I'm on time and I'm in time for the meeting. Like I got here before the start of the meeting. All right. If I got, if I got to the meeting at 830 and there's nobody there, I'm not really on time. I'm, I'm just really early. All right. So on time is, is like people generally, and there's not, it's not like five minutes or 10 minutes. It's just kind of generally around that time. And it could be whatever that group of people generally thinks is okay. So some places, like culturally, some people like really hate being late. Other people like it doesn't matter if you're late or not. You could be on time uh, and be like five minutes late in some places. That could be like a really bad thing. It may be, you know, companies also have their own rules about things like that. So if I'm starting a meeting at 10 o'clock, you would better be on time. And that means like being a little bit early. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to get you to think about it, like rather than thinking about it, uh, thinking about the grammar, it's just more how natives think about these words. All right. But in general, on is talking about something specific, while in is talking about within a general area. So it could be time or space. <clears throat> All right. How can I use weather? Uh, Google that. <laughs> we just don't have time to cover like all these uh, all these different things in here. Uh, all right, so red go for a long time. I put myself in an explosive mode, as you mentioned before in one of your videos. Then I reached the awareness level, but now I'm trying my best to accomplish the ownership level. Yeah. So remember that you do this word by word. So there will be some things like you can imagine. Uh, you learn a new word and you just heard it. You've been exposed to the language, but maybe you're not, you don't really understand what it means, so you don't have awareness of that. Uh, but then you get to the ownership level, but it's of that word. So you can have fluency in some vocabulary and not fluency in others. All right, so don't feel bad. You don't really get fluent in English, you get fluent in individual words and phrases. But the more uh, of these that you learn, the faster, obviously, your, your overall fluency improves. All right, uh, let's see. And the last one, look at that. We got to number 10 already. At uh, what time is it? Oh my goodness, almost uh, two hours over here, 97 minutes. All right, last one. This is another thing I commonly see. Uh, this is I am boring. I am boring. I am boring. <laughs> All right. Now, this is a correct sentence, but often it's 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 it's, it's it is expressing what people uh, do not want to express. So, if I say I am boring, it means like other people think I am bored. Yes. So, as Lewis got it, uh, I am bored. So, if maybe I am actually boring. Yes. So, the correct thing, if you're talking about I am bored. All right. I am bored. So typically you're talking about like something else is making you feel that way. So if, if I am actually boring, like if this lesson is boring for you and you don't want to watch it, then that's true. Like I am boring. I'm sorry if I'm boring. All right. But typically, yes. So the thing, and this is how natives would understand this. This is a good way for you to remember this is like the thing. We got the ing here and the ing over here. So the thing is boring. The thing is, is causing you to feel that way. All right? So the movie is boring and I am bored. 
So you are not like a thing. I mean, maybe, you know, some people can be boring. You know, it's okay. Maybe some people are bored by me. Maybe I am boring to some people. But typically, if we're talking about a movie being boring or something else, the thing. So we can remember that ing right here, over here. Now, anytime, just like I've covered in this video, these, uh, these 10 different examples, uh, these are things that I, 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 I try to give you ways of thinking about it that will make it easier to understand, but it's really all of the examples that really make it good for you, that really make it understandable, okay? So if you want to get fluent, uh, it's not just to like learn another like rule like this. This is just to help you when you're, when you're kind of organizing information or practicing things. Uh, and that's when you think, ah, okay, here's a, here's a very quick check. I am boring or the thing is boring. What are we talking about? <clears throat> and, and after you get like a hundred examples of this, then, then you can ask that. So yes, if, if you can ask someone else, like Dran said, uh, am I boring? Am I boring you? Am I boring you? So I'm using that correctly. But if I'm like this, I wouldn't say, man, I'm, I'm boring. I would say I'm bored. Like I am, I am bored. All right. The thing is boring. Something is boring me. All right. Got it? All right. Last thing, a uh, quick bonus for you. This was actually about spelling because I'll see some spelling mistakes. There are many English words uh, that have the same sound. These are called homonyms. Uh, but they will be spelled uh, differently. So like an example would be principal. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L and then principal. Whoops. P -R -I now I'm like forgetting how to spell it over at P-R-I-N-C-I. What P? Oh, principal. Principal. Yeah. So principal and principal. They sound exactly the same. Uh, but you can remember like a pal, like a friend, so a principal, this is the principal at a school. So someone like the principal is supposed to be a pal or a friend of students. So if you want to remember how to spell this word out, it's got pal at the end of it rather than P-L-E, all right? Like a principal. So the first principle of learning languages is to understand them like a native, all right? So when you, whenever you have uh, words like this, look for some way where, especially when you're writing something, you have more time to think. And in this way, you can think like, ah, oh, okay, what's, a, what's a, like a, a mnemonic? Like a mnemonic just means a, a way of remembering something. All right? So that's one example. Did I have any more? Uh, let's see. Ah, so another one. Let's see, I'll give you one last one. So compliment and compliment. It's the same word, the same sound. Well, it's not the same word, uh, but it does have the same sound. But this one has an I in it, compliment. So a compliment means like to say something nice about someone. So if we're talking about I, like someone said nice about, something nice about me, I. So ah, this compliment means to say something nice about someone. And this compliment means like these two things, they go together, like this shirt and these pants, they complement each other. All right, so little things like this, using mnemonics uh, is helpful when you have time to think, like when you're writing or reading. Uh, it's less helpful when you have time uh, or have no time when you're trying to respond automatically in conversations. And that's why you really want to develop the habit of using these things correctly. So I would recommend highly going back and reviewing the basics. These are the things that are going to get you flowing much faster. Uh, don't feel shy about that. Even if you think it's boring, Go back and do it. If you get lots of examples, uh, the, just imagine using these things correctly in your conversations, and that will motivate you. All right, let's see if we have any final, let's see. Uh, yes, bored out of my mind, says Lee, yes. Uh, I can only listen to you, I'm driving. Yes, it's okay. Uh, in electricity department, all of consumers' rage is a break out on the customer care. I'm yeah, there's like there's a lot a lot in in that like in that sentence right there. That's incorrect. Um, again, like be be simple. Like there is a there is a customer service problem with the electricity department or something like that. So try try not to like that's an example of of using phrasal verbs and other things where uh, like it, like the vocabulary is up here but the grammar usage is down here. 
This is the difference between passive and active, bored and boring. Yes, that's part of it. Duran, off topic. Uh, let's see. Each lesson from the vault must be taken at least one month for me to be fluent in that certain topic. Again, you will you will get fluent like word by word uh, or phrase by phrase, and you could become fluent in that particular word or phrase very quickly. Uh, so it could be maybe one example. I do my best to try to teach vocabulary. There is a lot to learn, even for one conversation. So if you're watching the Phrase Builder video, uh, I'll try to make the vocabulary easy to understand so you get at least to the awareness level. And then as you review those things and see them uh, in different ways, so you might watch the Phrase Builder video and then hear that same phrase used again in the conversation and then hear that same thing again in the uh, uh, question everything lesson. And listen, uh, especially for the grammar, that's very important. And even when I'm not highlighting the grammar specifically in a, like a video or something, you will hear things if you're listening for that. So the, like the, the basic idea, like you should be fluent in like most of that information. Uh, it takes a while for some things, but some things are going to be faster. But in general, you want to take your time to really master everything, and that's why it's better to spend more time with the lessons. But if you if you feel like you're understanding everything and you can use everything in your conversations, that's great. You don't need to rush through it, and you don't need to like feel like you have to go through a new one each month. You maybe want to spend more time uh, on like one lesson set, and that's perfectly fine too. All right. I often try to explain to people, uh, it's like a parent at a, a kid's sporting event. So you just tell your child, look, and this is the same thing I told my daughter when she was starting to do karate. Uh, I said, it's okay, like the, you, the teachers are going to tell you all of this stuff and they're really teaching you a lot because you know people want to learn a lot and get a lot of information, but I just want you to focus on one thing. So like, just how you stand, all right? So just focus on that uh, because you're, you're not trying to become a karate master in one lesson. All right, so just focus on one thing and in each day as you get better at that, then you can move on to something else. So in general, what I recommend for people is about a month on the lesson set. But if you feel like you need more, uh, like more time or whatever, then take more time. And if you, if you feel like you really understand it, then move faster through the lessons, it's okay. So Lisa, Drew, please monetize the channel or active super stickers so we can support the channel even more. That's the least we can do after all you've done for us. Well, the least you could do is nothing. <laughs> so I love, I love this expression in English. It's like, it's the least we could do. Like, well, the least you could do is actually doing nothing at all. <laughs> Remember that, like, it's, uh, it sounds kind of funny. Uh, but yes, this is a common expression. I do appreciate, uh, yes, people trying to give me more money is always nice. I do appreciate that. Um, but yes, uh, the best thing you can do is like videos and share them with other people and recommend other people learn with me. I think it's uh, also like part of, a, I don't know, maybe like a personal challenge for me, like how can I, how can I make it more difficult? <laughs> how can I make it more difficult for me to make money or whatever? So there, there's certain things I could do on YouTube, like just teaching, you know, here's like 50 vocabulary words or whatever, other stuff like that, uh, and, and turn on monetization on the channel. Uh, but I don't know, it's, it's, it's like... I don't know, I feel really bad doing that. I don't know why I feel bad. I think it's like, it's like a waste of time for learners. And, that's, and this is the, the trade-off for, for business in that way. Like there's like being, I don't know, it's like you could be right or you could be rich. <laughs> And that sounds sounds uh, weird, but uh, yes. But if you do appreciate what we do, then recommend uh, more people join us. That's the that's the best thing. That's like our, your your recommendation is like the the best uh, thing you can do. All right, let's see here. Anywhere, anybody else? Last questions here. AJ, what is the best English grammar book you would recommend someone to read? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure. People will recommend certain things. I have not seen a grammar book that teaches the way I teach. What you will get from most grammar books is like, here's like a bunch of different grammar points and we're going to spend very little time on each one of them. <clears throat> and so you can find that information anywhere. So this is why uh, like Dran or Slee or other people who are in Fluent for Life, like they will be focusing on one thing. So you pick a grammar point and you really master that thing and then you don't need to learn it anymore because you know it already. So you don't want to spend lots of time uh, doing things that like, you know, like, like I'm trying to learn, you know, 20 different grammar points in, in a day or something like that. Spend one, one day 
on just one grammar point. And you can find the grammar points anywhere. I, I mean, you might have something in a book, but uh, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't really. I don't recommend any grammar books, and I've looked through many of them, <clears throat> uh, but I've not find found anything um, that that has anything that I would rec I would recommend. Teacher, my humble request to you that you write something on your comment section of grammatical mistakes. If you find, please correct this. Yes, it would take too much time for me to write physical comments here, but I can. I, I do go back and try to help people with those. Uh, English grammar and use. Yeah, that's a, that's a common book. Uh, good evening, good evening, good morning. Yep, nice to see everybody here. All right, well, it is time to end the show. If you did not like this stream already, please do. I like when you like, you know. <laughs> so if you enjoy this, please like it uh, and do share it with anybody else who is, uh, whatever, trying to improve their grammar or their pronunciation, anything like that, or they just want to have something to listen to that's not the typical uh, kind of lesson. Uh, but let's see. We're going to have to... Let's see. I'd like to request it. What the best way to identify now in the room? Thank you very much. All right, so Ahmed, go back and watch this lesson. You will, you will learn more about that. But I recommend people go and like watch these again. A lot of people will not watch them, but the people who do, you will discover something more each time you learn. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining me. It's been a pleasure. If you'd like to learn more, join the uh, happy folks who are in Fluent for Life. You can click on the link in the description below this video. Uh, and if you do like Fluent for Life, you're already in the program. Recommend it to other people. All right. Roderico, I think, I think maybe, Roderico, are you in Fluent for Life? You might be in Fluent for Life too. Uh, but thank you all. It's been my pleasure, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.